Now we're going to look at a couple examples where the filter design procedure fails. So we've used MATLAB following the instructions, but because our specifications are overly restrictive, we end up with filter designs that are very numerically sensitive and they end up not meeting the specifications. So it's really important once you design a filter that you verify that your design satisfies the specifications and you need to exercise care in particular if the filter is relatively high order or has very narrow passband characteristics because very tight specifications can result in designs that end up being meaningless as we'll show here. So for example, we're going to design a low pass filter and we'll assume that the pass band has ripple specification that it must lie between 1 and 0.99 and the passband goes up to 0.2 pi, or pi over 5, and then the stop band begins at a frequency omega s and must be less than 10 to the minus 3 in terms of its gain, which translates to 60 dB of attenuation. We'll consider two cases where the stop band edge begins at 0.4 pi radians, so there's a 0.2 pi transition band, and then another case where the stop band edge is at 0.24 pi radians. In other words, the transition band is 0.04 pi, so it's fairly narrow. We're going to look at some Butterworth designs for this particular problem. So here's the first case where the transition band is 0.2 pi radians. And our design procedure in MATLAB gives us an order 12 Butterworth filter to satisfy the specifications and indeed it does appear as if we are satisfying them. We have a attenuation that exceeds 60 dB for 0.4 pi and above and we could zoom in here to see that the Passband also has a gain of 1 or 0.99 at the edge and therefore would satisfy the specifications. Now what we see is that this is a fairly high order filter, order 12, and that when you look at the coefficients associated with the system function or the difference equation, the B coefficients, the ones that take pass values of X, end up being quite small and dynamic range here is on the order of 1 and then the smallest one is 10 to the minus 3 so there's a dynamic range on the order of a thousand and we also have some degree of dynamic range with the A coefficients in that they range from a large of 42 to a small of 0 0.0021. Now this filter is right on the edge of actually working. You can see there is already some numerical sensitivity by looking at the pole zero diagram. In this case, we know that the Butterworth low-pass filter in continuous time has zeros at s equals infinity. And those zeros, when we pass them through the bilinear transform, are supposed to end up at z equals minus 1. We should have 12 zeros located at z equals minus 1. But because of the coefficients being in limited precision, we end up with zeros that are not exactly located at z equals minus 1, but are in that vicinity. So we're on the edge of numerical problems with this particular design, even though it does appear to satisfy the specifications. Now this is what happens if we shrink the transition band from 0.2 pi radians, which is what we had in the first case, to 0.04 pi radians. You can see that your frequency response is extremely irregular, and doesn't satisfy the specifications. And furthermore, when you look at the poles and zeros, we see that we've got an unstable filter because we have a whole bunch of poles that's moved outside the unit circle. And again, all these zeros are supposed to be at z equals minus one right here, and they've spread out all over the place. Note that the order of this filter became order 45, and that's just too large to expect to get reasonable results. When we look at the coefficients, you see a tremendous dynamic range. Here we have a multiplier in the B coefficients, which are associated with the pass values of the input, or the numerator of the system function, 
the multiplier is 10 to the minus 7, and then when I display things in four digits, I can't even see the values of most of these coefficients. And the same thing with the A coefficients. We know that this first one should be 1, but the range goes from 1 all the way to, say, 2 or 3 times 10 to the 8th. So there's a range of 10 to the 8th factor involved in the A coefficients. And when you start to see large dynamic ranges in either denominator coefficients, those associated with the recursion, the pass values of y, or extremely small values in the numerator coefficients, those are signs that your filter design is failing. And of course, a 45th order IIR filter is also a bad choice because it's just too high. When you have polynomials and you have zeros and poles multiplying things out with very large orders, pole and zero locations become very sensitive to small perturbations in the coefficients. And that's why we see these poles and zeros migrating outside the unit circle. Now the solution to this problem is to use a different type of filter design. FIR filters turn out are always stable and tend not to suffer from these same problems when one goes to very high order filters. In this particular case, it turns out we could also use a Chebyshev type 2 design. As I've shown here, we have a transition bandwidth of, again, 0.04 pi radians, as before. And in this case, we still get a pretty high order filter. It's order 15, but it does look as if it still satisfies the specifications. And when we look at the pole zero plot, the pole locations and the zero locations look about as we expect. The coefficients for the input term or the numerator of the system function show a much smaller dynamic range than we had with the Butterworth filter. We still have a pretty large dynamic range here because the largest coefficient has a magnitude of about 115 and the smallest coefficient has a magnitude of 3 times 10 to the minus 4. So there's still a very large dynamic range here and this filter, again, may be one that would not work so well if you were implementing it in with limited precision, such as in a fixed point arithmetic scenario. So it's important to check the outcome of your filter design and verify that you've chosen a design which will work when you implement it in practice. In particular, we're concerned about numerical sensitivity to slight perturbations in the coefficients of the filter, which are unavoidable when one uses limited precision arithmetic. And even in some of the cases I've shown here, using MATLAB with double precision floating point, we've seen problems.